Your Sunday Worship with Dr. Cecilia Greenbar is paid for by Sharing Faith Ministries and generous supporters like you. On the lookout for spiritual relapse. On the lookout for spiritual relapse. Tell somebody what I'm preaching. On the lookout for spiritual relapse. Y'all got that? Uh, On the lookout. Lookout. You got to be on the lookout for spiritual relapse. Help me, Jesus. On the lookout for spiritual relapse. I'm going to do things a little bit differently um, right now, and I'm going to tell you up front, I'm going to give you some hints right up front, the signs of spiritual relapse. The first sign of spiritual relapse is a reduced fellowship with those who are walking in the light. That's the first sign of spiritual relapse, that there is a reduced fellowship with those who are walking in the light. That comes from 1 John 1 verse 7. The second sign of spiritual relapse is a reluctance to be trained and guided in the work of ministry. That comes from Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. A reluctance to be trained and guided in the work of ministry. The third sign of spiritual relapse is a relaxed attitude towards the mission of the church. It comes from our verse, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. A relaxed attitude towards the mission of the church. I thought I would be generous today and just give you the points up front. Amen. I I did that because I wanted to marinate in your spirit as I move along in this message. Let me start by saying that physical medical physicians, you know, doctors of not the head, but of the body, not of the teeth, but the body, can I tell you that they do not comb the streets of any city on the lookout for people who are presenting symptoms of relapse, nor signs of intentional or initial diagnosis. I mean, when was the last time you saw a doctor actually looking for people who look like that they're going into a diabetic relapse, who look like they're going into a, a some other kind of physical relapse. They just don't do that. Instead, they actually wait in the places where they practice medicine for the sick to eventually show up. Health care plans, at least some health care plans have provisions for preventative medicine that encourages people to get regular checkups in order to find potential illnesses early on. This practice of preventative medicine can inspire congregations as they are transitioning from being church-minded to kingdom-minded. You see, church-minded congregations, church-minded congregants are ignorant or either indifferent about symptoms that present 
during spiritual relapse. Instead, they move into action after spiritual death has already occurred. Just in case you're not following me, what I'm saying to you is that traditional church congregants will wait until the person absolutely hadn't been seen in church in a year. Uh, traditional congregants will, will wait until they realize that, oh yeah, I don't remember the last time I saw them in Sunday school or Bible study. They never show up for any kind of training or teaching. And oh yeah, I, yeah, that one right there. They, they don't care what the church is doing. They don't care anything about evangelizing or ministering to the sick or to the homeless or to the people who don't know Jesus. Their attitude is so indifferent, but traditional church-minded people don't even catch what's going on before it becomes a critical problem. They just sit back and wait until they're on their spiritual deathbed, until they've gone all the way back into the sin that God brought them out of before they even open up their eyes and recognize that there is a problem with sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so. They wait until the situation is all the way far gone before they'll do anything in terms of having any sensibility of what's going on. Come on, tell somebody I said spiritual relapse. Spiritual relapse. Yeah, spiritual relapse. They wait until somebody has gone all the way back into the grip of darkness before their deeds have been even brought to their consciousness that something seems to be going wrong. But when a congregation or a congregant is transitioning into a kingdom mindset, they are trained and they position themselves to be on the lookout for spiritual relapse. I said on the lookout for it. Kingdom mindsets do not want others to experience spiritual relapse, relapse or spiritual death. So when signs present, they spring into action immediately. In other words, since I seem to have to keep bringing it home, um, they don't wait for the pastor to say, bruh steward, bruh trustee, how come so-and-so hadn't been to church? Have you called them? Oh, no, pastor, I ain't think about calling them. That's church mindset. Kingdom mindset says, ooh, the person who sits on my row, I haven't seen them in a couple of weeks. I think I need to go by and check on them. Um, I haven't seen them. I saw brother so-and-so roaming the streets at 2 o'clock in the morning. Maybe I need to go find out what's going on with brother, sister, so-and-so so that I can help them along the way. I can't get no help up in here. I had a whole lot of help last week, Kelly, but I can't get none today. But, but what I'm trying to say to us is that we need to be more kingdom-minded and be on the lookout for spiritual relapse instead of waiting until people are already spiritually dead and it's time to put them in their grave and stay the benediction over top of them. Yeah. Lord, have mercy Hell, mercy. Now, just in case you forgot what those signs of spiritual relapse are, now I think it's time to say them again just to get it down in your spirit. Spiritual relapse, number one, is a reduced fellowship with those who are walking in the light. And I don't mean that you're not fellowshipping with anybody. I mean you're not fellowshipping with those who are walking in the light. Yeah, we all have some fellowship going on, but is your fellowship with people who are walking in the light? I didn't say with people who show up at church periodically. I said you got to have fellowship with people who are already walking in the light. First John, let's go there. First John, first John, first John 1, first John 1 and 7. Let me get there. Glory to God. First John 1 and 7. If I were to read all of it, I, 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 it would bless your heart. But 7 says, but if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. 
And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. See, when you're going through spiritual relapse, that means sin is slowly but surely getting back on top of you. But see, when you are walking in the light with people who are having fellowship with people who are walking in the light, they'll see the sin creeping up on you, and then they'll come and say, wait a minute, my brother, wait a minute, my sister, that is not the way of God. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is helping somebody. Maybe I should just preach to the people in TV land. Amen. Because I'm trying to encourage us that we have to be on the lookout for people who have reduced fellowship. In other words, you got to be on the lookout. I shouldn't be the only one who knows who the members of the church are. I shouldn't be the only ones who know who have joined us in the last two years. Y'all not helping me right here. I shouldn't be the only one who knows the telephone number and the email address of those who have come on board in the last two years to encourage them to walk in the light. But some of you who are walking in the light should be on the lookout. Help me, Jesus. You got reduced fellowship with the saints and then there is a reluctance to be trained and guided in the work of ministry. Let's go to Ephesians, why don't you? The fourth chapter, verses 11 and 12. God has a plan because when you first get saved, it's exciting. I don't care if it happened 50 years ago or if it had five, happened five weeks ago. When you first get saved, you're excited. But you're the only one excited because the devil's not excited. So he's going to try to be pulling you back. He's going to try to get you to relapse in your walk with God. He's going to try to get you to relapse. Somebody say relapse. Yes. And since he's trying to get you to relapse, don't you know that God already knew that the devil was going to try to get you to relapse? Yes. Right here at the point, reluctance to be trained. Wow. Reluctance to be trained. Ushers don't want to be trained. People don't want to be trained. It's called lawlessness. Lawlessness. Y'all don't, don't feel it. Yes, you do. Lawlessness. It's not funny. Lawlessness. That's what you call spiritual relapse. On your way to death and don't even know it. I could say the benediction right now, Mark. And I think my point would be ever so clear. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Because you don't want to be trained. And, and listen, right here in the scripture, Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12. God knew this kind of crazy stuff would happen. That y'all laughing about, you think it's funny. It's not funny. Verse 11 says, the gifts he gave were some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for the building up of the body of Christ. I could read 13. Until all of us come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity and to the full measure of the stature of Christ. See, God knew that there would be lawless people in the church. This church and every church. And so what he did to counteract it, he put a system up, a governmental system up, to help with the lawlessness. Because we're not perfected in the unity of the body of Christ. So he put apostles in place and prophets in place, place and pastors and evangelists and teachers. Because the people came into Christ just as you were without one plea. But when you come into the body of Christ, you come with your old mindset and your old attitudes and your old lawlessness. And so God put a structure in place to teach you to get that stuff up out of you so that his kingdom can function properly. He knew how to keep you from having a spiritual relapse. The other sign is a relaxed attitude towards the mission of the church. We read it right there in 1 Peter verses 4 through 9 in the second chapter. We seem to forget who we are, that we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. And I know we forget because we don't act royal and we don't act chosen sometimes. Oh, I'm talking to some people up in here today. Don't act 
royal, don't act chosen, don't act like we have anything to do with Christ or Christ has anything to do with to us. When we present like that, those are symptoms that are presenting, it's presenting the fact that we're going into spiritual relapse. And God help me today, I'm looking at some people who are on spiritual relapse. You right there on the verge, I mean you all tied up to all of the machines and all of your vital signs are going down, down, down because you won't attend to fellowship like you're supposed to. You refuse to allow yourself to be trained and you are indifferent towards what the kingdom is all about. Well, I want to close right now because your feelings are a little hurt, but that's good for you. I need to close right now because some of us who are not in spiritual relapse need to wake up out of our stupor and begin to be on the lookout for people sitting on our pew in our own household last name is ours blood like ours and they are experiencing spiritual relapse and yet we won't jump into action I'm here to encourage those who are not in spiritual relapse to begin to pray for those who are to begin to hold people accountable who are and let them know God did not die for you to die a second time but Jesus went to the cross so that you could live eternally some people seem not to realize that you can be in Christ and walk out of Christ of your own free volition but I'm here to encourage you today to wake up out of your spiritual relapse stewardess wake up out of your spiritual relapse trustees wake up out of your spiritual relapse choir member wake up out of your spiritual relapse occasional worshiper and come into the body of Christ a hundred percent stand on your feet stand, stand on your feet I, I don't have anything else to say because I think the Holy Spirit made it abundantly clear abundantly clear I, abundantly clear. Anybody watch the broadcast today? The rest of you should have. One of the points that I preached in that sermon is when we are has so much apathy, we want God to turn our hearts to Him. You turn your own heart. But see, when you're going through a spiritual relapse, you don't even realize that your heart is not turned towards God. You think what you're doing is okay. That's why, so, you know, the scripture says, you know, take that beam out of your eye. Because when you're going through spiritual relapse, it's a lot easier to see somebody else in relapse than it is to see yourself going into relapse. And that's why being united is so important because if you can't see it on you, your brother, your sister should be able to. And then pull you to the side and say, listen, it looks like your fervor is going down, baby girl. It looks like your commitment is shaking, brother man. Because when you're in spiritual relapse, can I tell you what happens? Fallen angels who are familiar with your practices will come and whisper in your ear and try to convince you that you have justifiable cause to do what you're doing. That's it, what happens. They're familiar with your patterns. Yeah. Well, you know you got to work that job. It's all right. God understands. Actually, he doesn't. And you falling more and more into relapse until your fire is not even burning anymore. There are no embers. But the beauty of being connected in a church is that somebody should be able to see what's happening to you. 
we had church conference and I had a pop quiz. I asked, how many of you know how many people got saved in our ministry last conference year? Second question, pop quiz. Name three people who got saved. I am sad to report that no one under 50 could do it. Wait a minute. Over 50 could do it. Angie could because she brought a bunch of them. But, but the pillars of the church, that's what y'all are, right? <laughs> Didn't even know three people who had given their life to the Lord. Now who's in spiritual relapse? When your love has waxed so cold that you can't even remember the name of three people who got saved. Who's in spiritual relapse now? Pastor, why are you doing this? Because there's work for us to do in the kingdom. And we fool ourselves to, if we think that we can be effective outside of this building. If we can't even care enough to get to know the people who come to Christ inside of this building. And the enemy, these fallen angels, you know the ones that got kicked out with Satan? They're familiar with your activities. They know your practices. And so they'll walk with you and whisper in your ear. You don't really have to go to that church. You can visit churches. Just long as you get the word. That's a lie. If you have a pastor where the doctrine is being preached. Then that's where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to show up for Bible study. Here, here, here go those fallen angels, especially that. You know you don't have enough gas money to be going out there another day of the week for Bible study. And you say, yeah, that's right. Relapse. How many of you know you're in spiritual relapse? And, and, and some of you should have raised your hand, but you're too proud. You're too proud. And the enemy will use that baby girl against you. Where's your commitment? Relapse. Where's your joy? Relapse. Where's your steadfastness? Relapse. Where's your willingness to be trained? Relapse. You know how you get out of it? You make a decision to pull yourself up out of it. You make the decision to make fellowship with those who are walking in the light a priority. If you hang out with darkness, eventually you are gonna go back to darkness. There's no darkness in Christ. You can't run with darkness half the time, a quarter of the time. An eighth of the time. And don't think it's gonna, not going to get on you. I was watching this program last night of these, these guys that like to travel remote parts of the world to share the gospel. Young guys and they, you know, it's like a documentary. And they were somewhere in, in Asia, somewhere. I don't know where they were. And they had gotten a guide to take them to a remote village because they wanted to go and share the gospel. And it was very remote, very. And the, the higher they went up this mountain, the narrower the path became. And they had to go through water and all this kind of stuff. And this is the nasty part. Leeches got on them. Ew, I don't think I'd ever seen leeches like that. And they would just drop on them. And, and they, they kept walking. But they were like, they would have to pick them off. And all these leeches got on them. Just when they were trying, they were trying to make their way up the mountain. Amen. And then when they got to their resting place, they had to go through all of their clothes and stuff to make sure that there were no leeches that had burrowed down into their shoes or anything like that. I want you to know that when you don't, 
fellowship regularly with people who are walking in the light. Their spiritual darkness will become like leeches that will get on your spirit and suck the life out of you. And you think that the association is no big deal, but it is slowly sucking the life out of you. Today is the day, like those men, they got to the filling this little trading post. It didn't look like much. It was a raggedy old looking building, but they went inside and they sat down and they just started taking stuff off. They took their shoes off and their socks off and their shirt just to make sure that no leech had gotten under their clothes and onto their skin. And that's what this worship service is for you today. It's an opportunity for you to peel back the layers of who you are and to see where is it that the enemy has leached onto you and is sucking the very life out of you. Uh, it could be your job. It could be your friends. It, it could be, it, but it's sucking the very life out of you. It could be your attitude. It, it could be a number of things, but it's causing you not to have fellowship with those who are walking in the light. This service is meant for you to sit down and pluck them off. Just pluck it off in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. You ought to just... Some of you need to pluck your ear because it's right in your ear. Every time you turn around, leeches in your ear. Le just y'all, y'all not y'all can't feel me. I don't care, but I'm trying to help you. Every time you turn around, right in your ear, blah 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 blah. You need to pluck them leeches out of your ear. Sometimes it's right in your eyes. Every time you turn around, it's always right there. It Preceding program is a greenhouse production. Come where vision grows.